Okay, so we're going to share the Padlet results. And so for those that uh, put in comments, thank you. You should be hopefully seeing the uh, Padlet screen right now. Please, somebody unmute if you do not see it. Um, I was going to just walk through and point out a few things on the Padlet. Um, I encourage you, for those that are coming Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have a different Padlet link to continue putting uh, information on the Padlet screen. Uh, so uh, people mentioned the quality of the speakers. Uh, yes, we had some really good speakers today, and I have um, uh, known Dale for several years, quite a number of years now, and he's always been a great speaker. And uh, it's always really good to hear from the insectary. Uh, I did take a group there before for our science cafe and it's a really great facility. Um, I've had my animals taken care of, uh, one, well, one of my cats or rather taken care of at the veterinary companion animal clinic. Uh, so there are all sorts of uh, great speakers uh, this today that I have um, in one way or another uh, interacted with over the past at least few months, if not years. Uh, a comment on uh, a library uh, being a host for extreme weather, and that's, it seems to be an increasingly common occurrence for universities to start having their um, facilities with uh, their own power sources. So that's a very interesting idea. Um, people mentioned that we had uh, some wonderful tours today, uh, comments on the insectary, uh, the uh, vets in acupuncture, and had no idea that vets were using acupuncture. Um, in interesting uh, uh, comments on the Geological Museum, uh, links to information about uh, Edward Jenner and his legacy exhibit. Uh, the client, uh, climate rather, resiliency hub, uh, the uh, library for education and space for climate change. Uh, somebody is actually writing a comment as I'm talking. Um, I really enjoyed the talk about the virtual, a virtual tour about the animal hospital. Uh, and the great to see that uh, wheelchairs are being customized uh, for the individual. Um, and uh, a link to information about the uh, Great Lakes Guide. Uh, and Lucas the Spider. So uh, please feel free to check out this Padlet. We're going to share this. And for those that are wondering, the recordings will be shared eventually once we have time to um, uh, update the transcripts and make sure that the language being used is um, uh, up to snuff especially since we're using a lot of science terminology. Uh, and I often tend to trip up uh, voice to text. So we'll see how well this does with my own talking. Uh, so uh, we do have some times for uh, general chatter. If anybody wants to put anything in the chat and uh, I'm going to stop sharing right now. Uh, if people want to put anything in chat, we can continue chatting there for the next few uh, minutes while I say that uh, please uh, cast your final ballots. I am going to give you one uh, until uh, like 422 to cast your ballots for the lightning talk. So please uh, put in your last minute dot storming votes and I will refresh the screen and announce the winner. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to double check on our um, chat to see if anybody has anything. So somebody mentioned the movie uh, American Animals about a heist uh, related to libraries. So I've never seen that. That would be interesting to share. Um, Kent, do you want to... Um, Unmute, we have a little bit of time. Do you want to unmute and share that movie? I've never heard of it. Can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, uh, I'm Kath Lacombe. I work with at uh, Illinois State University. Um, it's a movie that concerns a heist that took place at uh, Transylvania University in Kentucky um, for, uh, regarding some rare books that were on display in a 
you know, what libraries think of as a secured area, um, you know, behind a locked glass door when it when that when it's not staffed, I believed, and then staffed by um, a librarian, professional librarian during the day, and some students and a uh, basically, uh, you know, I, I don't want to ca categorize someone, but seemed like sort of a hoodlum from the community. Uh, teamed up and they decided they were going to rob the, um, the the person from the community, I think was older and kind of, but they were all, you know, it was a lot of young privileged males who uh, didn't really think of the ramifications probably of what they were doing. But regardless of that, these were young adults and this was a horrifying event and the librarian could have easily lost their life. Um, and, and the movie itself just chronicles their planning which is amazingly inept. And then the, uh, you know, the attempted heist, which ended up with the librarian being assaulted pretty severely. Um, so it's just really interesting because it, it shows the perspective, like when someone was asking earlier, when Allison was asking about the cases being out and the things being really obvious, uh, you know, inside glass cases, this was the same deal. It was this huge glass case. And that's exactly what these two of them, at least two of them were students did was they saw that, I think at least two, um, they, they saw it and said, uh, you know, this would be easy to take. So then they decided to, to take place with this heist. Um, and we also had uh, uh, Kimberly talk about the book, The Map Thief, which I think uh, I actually have a personal copy at home. Kimberly, do you wanna briefly share what that book is about for those that haven't heard of that one? Uh, yes. Um, so it was a gentleman, well, a criminal who um, he was a map dealer and he actually went, um, he had these connections made with librarians that respected him and he went to collections all over the country um, and he was using razor blades to remove maps and um, a lot of the librarians really just, they felt so, so betrayed because they had helped this man in the past and he ruined his career and his life. Um, and a lot of the libraries really made huge attempts to get their maps back, but some of them, they just couldn't even find the homes from the, for the ones that he stole. Okay, so I am now going to announce the winner for the um, lightning talks and let me get back to my screen and do a final refresh just in case. So the winner of our dot storming vote for uh, the lightning talks is Megan Carlton, whose uh, title was Impactful Insights of Researchers Engaging with Citizen Science. So she had the uh, 30 dots, uh, and, but there were a lot of people with uh, quite a number of dots. So uh, feel free, you could always go back and see what the dot distribution was, but Megan Carlton, you had uh, 30 dots. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. We are at uh, a wrapping up point. It looks like we're gonna be able to end a little bit early today. Um, and it's Friday, so I don't think I'm going to have anybody complaining about that, but send me an email if you'd rather have stayed another 30 minutes. But uh, I really appreciate everybody coming today and joining us. We will have uh, items uh, for you on Monday and Tuesday as well. Most of them are going to be talks from researchers, although we do still have, uh, I believe, two facility tours. Uh, within those days as well, but it's mostly going to be talks from researchers. Uh, and the schedule again is uh, you had received that in email, take a look at it. And I hope everybody had a good day today. And I hope to see many of you guys again on Monday. And please reach out to me if you have any questions. And hopefully once we will we'll be able to get any recordings up uh, within uh, a few weeks of the boot camp ending because we have to work with transcription, uh, but we will get those up as uh, fast as possible. And thank you everybody who have put some kind words into the chat. And with that, I'm going to stop recording.
and everybody is free to head out for the day. Uh, but you're also free to hang around and chat for a few minutes if you really want to as well. Uh, I will end the chat about 4.30.